So, which is accurate? 430 years or 400 years of Israel's affliction? When did it start? When did it end? We have some testimony from the Masoretic text, Septuagint text, the, Pentate uh, the uh, Samaritan Pentateuch, and from Paul in Galatians. And so we have some conflicting ideas. Looks like there were some errors that creeped into the Masoretic text, 4th century, that weren't there in the Septuagint. By the way, Septuagint is what Jesus went by when he quoted. And um, also the, the Samaritan Pentateuch has the 430 <coughs> years. So we're going to look at Genesis 21, 4 to 14, going back in Abraham's history. <coughs> Because Abraham circumcised, circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God commanded him. And now Abraham was 100 years old when his son was born to him. But he did, did he not have another son by the handmaiden, Hagar? And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. And she also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. So the children child grew and was weaned and Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian whom she had born to Abraham scoffing there's the beginning of it therefore she said to Abraham <clears throat> cast out this bondwoman and her son the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son namely with Isaac <clears throat> that kind of clears up another matter of who was the son the descendant of Abraham that would inherit the promise was it Ishmael or Isaac? Well, there it is. And the matter was displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah had said to you, listen to her voice, for in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because she, he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and the skin of water, and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and, her, and the boy to Hagar, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And so began the affliction of the descendant of Abraham. For the descendants of Abraham, the affliction began between Ishmael and Isaac. Genesis 21, 15 to 21. Look at Galatians 4, 29. Paul says, But as he, Ishmael, was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him, Isaac, who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. There's the affliction beginning. Corroborated. Nevertheless, what does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. There's the time frame in years. The Lord's promise to Abraham, Abram, until, until Isaac's birth, 25 years. Isaac reaches 60 years old at Jacob's birth, 60. Jacob went to Egypt in 130 years, so 130. Total time in Canaan before going to Egypt, 215 years. There you go. The time from Abraham's descendants' entrance into Egypt to their exodus is 215 years, not 430 years, as some contend. <clears throat> and of course, they're going to stick with the contradiction and not investigate it properly. Guess whose job that is? Yours and mine. These things will stick, and then I hear people say, well, I believe Jesus and all this other stuff, and they're right. But then they have to ignore some other things because all these people who question them, they, they don't do their homework, the, you and I to verify the validity, the marvelous validity of the Bible. So as you get older, you start to lose confidence only because you haven't been a good student. <clears throat> and so that's why I became a good student. I would hear one thing over here, and then the next week, something over there. And then people are respected. They conflict with one another. Which one do you choose? You have to choose your own study. Compare Exodus 12, 40 to 41, translated Masoretic Hebrew text. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, at that very same day, it came to pass that all the armies, the divisions of the people, the 
Lord went out from the land of Egypt. But then you compare that to the Greek and Samaritan Pentateuch texts. Exodus 12.40, translated, And the sojourning of the children of Israel, while they sojourned in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, was 430 years. Translated from the Septuagint Greek and the Pentateuch in the next verse, And it came to pass, after the 430 years, all the fortunes of the Lord came forth out of the land of Egypt by night. So the key difference between Masoretic Hebrew, 4th century A.D., and Septuagint, which is about 285 to 246 B.C., and the Samaritan Pentateuch, which is also considerably more ancient, and allowed many allowed by many scholars to be the most correct copy of the five books of Moses, they includes in this issue, and the land of Canaan. That phrase is excluded, and we have an overbearing idea of contradiction and how many years they were spent in Egypt. And they said, well, some people say, well, yeah, that only leaves half the time for Israel's population to grow from 75 to more than 2 million. Well, you look at 14 children per couple, and it's easy. So this phrase is omitted in the Masoretic text, evidently due to the scribal error or deliberate omission. But it is included in the other much earlier versions. And the period of 430 years for the entire time for the Lord's promise to Abraham to, and, and to Exodus is corroborated by the Apostle Paul in both Canaan and Egypt. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds, but as of many, but as the one, and to your seed who is Christ. And this I say that the law, the Mosaic law, only three months later when they arrived in the promised land across the Red Sea, the, the passing across the Red Sea of the Gulf of Aqaba, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ that it should have made the promise of no effect. So according to the script Septuagint, Samaritan Pentateuch, and the Apostle Paul, the period of 430 years commenced at the time when the Lord first said to Abram to get out of his country and go to a land he would show him, whereupon the Lord made promise his promise of his covenant with Abraham. And accordingly, this period of 430 years would terminate with Moses' and Israel's exodus and Egypt the law being given roughly three months after that. Hence, this period of time of 430 years included the time of 215 years <clears throat> that Abraham and his descendants spent in Canaan, leaving 215 years to be spent in Egypt. This amount of time in Egypt is more feasible than 430 years, and a careful examination of Scripture indicates that the period of 400 years, in which Genesis 15, 13, and Acts 7, 6 refers, overlaps the 430-year period beginning in the 30 year of the latter period. So, Genesis 15, 13 to 16. Then he, the Lord, said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve I will serve, judge. Afterwards they shall come out with great possessions. But as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace and you shall be buried at a good old age. And then we have an, another key point, Genesis 15, 16. But in the fourth generation they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. Notice that the Lord prophesied to Abram that his descendants would return to Canaan in during the lifetime of the fourth generation. This implied a time frame of the Israelites' stay in Egypt that was limited to being within the span of four generations of Jacob's descendants, but not necessarily inclusive of the entire lifespans of all four generations as some contend. There are a couple of points of contention here, and it's kind of, you have to dig in. According to Exodus 6:16 6, to 20, and Numbers 3, 1 Chronicles 6, and, and 2:36, 12 to 13, these generations of were Levi, Kohath, Amron, Moses, and at the time that Jacob was 130 years, he traveled from Canaan to Egypt, Genesis 47, 9, with all of his family, which included Levi, Exodus 6, 16, and his son, Kohath, Genesis 46, 8 to 11, a lot of research. Levi lived 137 years, let's do some math, Exodus 6, 16, and his son, Kohath, lived 133 years, Exodus 6, 18, and Kohath's son, Amron, lived in 137 years, six, Exodus 6, 20, and Moses spent 80 in Egypt before the Exodus and lived 120 years, Deuteronomy 34, 7. 
The total years. Okay, do a little math. Total years of the lives of Kohath, Amron, plus Moses is 80 until the Exodus is 350 years plus two years for the childbearing of Amron and Moses, which equals 352 years maximum time for the descendants of Abraham to stay in Egypt. <clears throat> so it couldn't be 430 or 400. Note that since Levi's wife, life overlapped that of his son Kohath, whom the latter was born in Canaan and traveled with his father to Egypt, the calculation of the time spent in Egypt would begin with Kohath's lifespan, less, less the time he spent in Canaan, which is not specified. Do more math here. But then, again, allowing for more of the overlapping years of fathers, sons, and grandsons at the time, 215 years total in Egypt is more reasonable than 430 years, which the latter exceeds the maximum of 352. See, so furthermore, Moses' mother, Jacobin, was born in Egypt, Numbers 2659. Since if Abraham's descendants had lived in Egypt for 430 years, as some contend, then Jochebed would have to have given birth to Moses when she was about 300 years older, old in order for Moses to leave Egypt when he was 80. Math doesn't add up. 430 minus 80 equals 350 minus the time for her to be born in Egypt to reach the age when she married Kohath and then to become pregnant and give birth to Moses of about 50 years or less. 300 plus years old. But this is well beyond the age that women gave birth at that time in history, even then. A more reasonable age to give birth to Moses of about 85 would be arrived at with the 215 years of Israel dwelling in Egypt, which scripture seems to corroborate best. So 215 minus 80 equals 135 minus the time for Jochebed to be born in Egypt and then reach the age when she married Kohath and then to become pregnant to give and give birth to Moses of about 50 years or less equals 85. In those days, that, that's remarkable now, but in those days it was not. This is five years less than when Sarah bore Isaac. In an article written more than 30 years ago, The Duration of the Egyptian Bondage, chronologist Harold Honer observed, when one looks at the various passages of Scripture concerning the length of Israel's bondage in Egypt, one immediately discovers that there are apparent disagreements in the biblical record. And thus he wrote, to fit four generations into a 215-year period is much more reasonable than a 430-year span, light year span. So compare extra-biblical sources. David Rowe, respected Egyptologist in his book Pharaohs and Kings, declared that new archaeological discoveries indicated that Israel went down into Egypt somewhere around 1662 B.C. and was delivered by God through Moses, 1447 B.C., the span of 215 years. And Josephus, Josephus wrote in Antiquities of the Jews that the Israelites left Egypt in the month of Xanticus on the 15th day of the lunar month, 430 years after our forefather Abraham came into Canaan, but 215 years only after Jacob removed into Egypt. So there's corroboration outside of Scripture. Hence, in his book, Pharaohs and Kings, Roll further remarked, now according to the statements of Josephus himself, he had access to very old documents, formerly housed in the Temple of Jerusalem, from which to draw his account of early Israelite history. Josephus, Josephus lived in the first century A.D., and so his writings are dated hundreds of years before the Masoretic text, the Tanakh, Tanaka, Hebrew Old Testament, was completed in the fourth century A.D. And his source documents were genuine, if his source documents were genuine, genuine then the information he gives for the duration of the sojourn derives from a much earlier period than that employed by the Masoretes from when they had made their version of the history of Israel and a further several centuries before the earliest extant copy of the Masoretic text. So at the time of Abraham's descendants moving from Canaan to live in Egypt, in the land of Goshen, the party consisted of Abraham, who was 430 years old, and all of his descendants and their wives. This group included Levi and his son Kohath, the ancestors of Moses, as well as Joseph and his descendants and their wives who had arrived in Egypt 39 as a slave nine years earlier as a result of the treachery his brothers uh, went through and put him through, Genesis 37, 12 to 36. So, we look at Genesis 46, 1 to 34 to corroborate more so next time.